Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about VPNs, virtual private networks. A private network uses links which are dedicated for an individual organization. Local area networks are private networks. You don't have another organization in your building using the links between your switches and routers. Wide area networks can also use physical links which are dedicated for an individual organization. Looking at the example here, we've got a company with an office in New York and an office in Boston, and they put in a physical link between New York and Boston, which is dedicated just for traffic between those two offices. Now, with this example, they're also going to want to have internet connectivity as well, which they don't have right now. So we could put in an internet link from New York. That will allow our New York users to get out to the internet. And for our users in Boston, they could send their internet traffic over the private link to New York and then break out to the internet from there. There are also lots of other network topologies that we could use for our WAN. We'll cover those throughout this section. A virtual private network provides a virtual tunnel between private networks, like our two offices, across a shared public network, which will usually be the internet. And traffic traveling over the tunnel is encrypted and only readable by the authorized users on both sides. You don't want to send confidential company information unencrypted over the internet where anybody sniffing that traffic is going to be able to read it. So when you encrypt traffic, it doesn't stop people from sniffing and seeing the traffic, but because it's encrypted, it's garbled and they're not going to be able to read what it actually says. Users can share data over the tunnel as if they were connected with a dedicated private link. So the example we've got here now, the same company, they've got their office in New York, they've got their office in Boston, and we put in an internet link in both sites. So that gives them their internet connectivity, but they also want to be able to send that confidential corporate information between the two offices as well. So we need that to be secure. So for that, we create a VPN tunnel between the two offices. Now, all of our corporate traffic between the two offices goes through the tunnel. It's encrypted, so nobody else can read it. So a VPN, it's virtual because it's not an actual physical point-to-point -point link between the two offices, and it's private because we encrypt the traffic to make sure that nobody else can read it. VPNs allow an organization to use the same physical links for connectivity to the internet and between their offices. And because they use shared infrastructure, VPN connections are typically less expensive than dedicated physical links. So a big selling point of VPNs is it's lower cost than using dedicated physical links between your offices. There's a couple of different types of VPN. We've got site-to-site -site VPN and remote access VPN. Site-to-site -site VPN connections are terminated on a router or firewall in each office. Software does not need to be installed on user desktops. So the example here, this can be our offices in New York and Boston again. The configuration is all done on the firewall in this example, or it could be a router as well. And then our PCs in New York and our PCs in Boston, also between servers as well, that traffic goes over the VPN tunnel. We didn't need to put on any extra software or make any changes to our PCs. And for site-to-site -site VPN tunnels, we're going to be using typically IPsec for the encryption. A remote access VPN connection is between a router or firewall in the office and VPN software, which is installed on an individual user's device. For example, Cisco AnyConnect is a VPN client software. 
the user can access the VPN from anywhere with internet connectivity. So the user could be working at home, they could be in a hotel, they could be in an internet cafe, and this allows them to access their private files that are in the office over that VPN connection. For remote access VPN, that usually uses SSL, which is secure sockets layer. Also, we can use IPsec again for the encryption here. Now, our different configuration options. First up, and this is for site-to-site -site VPNs. First up, we've got an IPsec tunnel. This is an open standard IPsec tunnel supported on all different vendors' devices. This does not support multicast. And a reason that you might want to allow multicast is, well, routing protocols use multicast. So looking back at the diagram again, if we've got our offices in New York and Boston, and we've got lots of different individual subnets inside New York and Boston as well, it would be nice if we could advertise those to New York and Boston between each other over that VPN connection. Well, if you're using an open standard IPsec connection between your offices, that does not support multicast, so you can't use a routing protocol to carry the information. You can still have connectivity between them by using static routes. Another way that we can do that connection, which does support multicast and routing protocols, is we can use a GRE over IPsec tunnel. GRE stands for Generic Routing Encapsulation. GRE is also a tunneling protocol as well. So you can use just GRE on its own, but if you do that, it doesn't support encryption. You can use IPsec on its own, but if you're using standard IPsec, it doesn't support multicast. So by using GRE over IPsec, you combine the two together. That way you get the encryption from IPsec and you also get the multicast support from GRE. Next way we can do the configuration is by using IPsec VTI. VTI stands for a virtual tunnel interface. This is a Cisco proprietary simplified configuration which does support multicast. So it's also IPsec, but it has to be between two different Cisco devices, slightly different configuration, and then that does support multicast. IPsec VTI came out after the support for GRE over IPsec. So IPsec VTI is very often used for site-to-site -site VPNs between Cisco devices. Some other newer configuration options, we've got DMVPN, which is Dynamic Multipoint VPN. This is also Cisco proprietary. This is a scalable, simple hub and spoke style configuration, which enables direct full mesh connectivity between all offices. So for the configuration, let's say we've got our main offices in New York and we've got 20 smaller branch offices. If we were going to use those earlier IPsec configuration options and we wanted to have a full mesh of connectivity, we would have loads of VPN tunnels going everywhere. If we use DMVPN from the branch offices, we just configure a VPN tunnel going to the hub site. We don't need to configure tunnels directly between all our branches. So the configuration is hub and spoke. But for the actual traffic, what happens is the branches learn how to get to each other from the hub site. So when you send traffic from branch to branch, it goes directly from branch to branch without having to go through the hub. So the configuration is simplified because you don't have to configure so many tunnels, but the actual traffic, you do get that full mesh connectivity. So traffic always goes over the best, most direct path. So that's DMVPN. FlexVPN is basically a newer version of DMVPN. It's very similar to it, but it's a newer technology. And the last one we have is GetVPN, which stands for Group Encrypted Transport VPN. Again, this is Cisco proprietary. This offers scalable centralized policy for VPN over a non-public infrastructure, so not going over the internet. This is often used over MPLS. So those are all the different configuration options, but I'm not going to show you how to do them here. And the reason is you don't need to know that for CCNA. And that's everything I needed to cover here. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.
If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.